Thank you very much, Marcus and Minister. Excellent uh, opening remarks. Thank you for those. I want to pick up on a couple of points, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure and thank you for the invitation uh, to speak here. What I'd like to do, we have only very short time, um, uh, a couple of minutes, we are told. What I'd like to do is give you a sense of the speed of transition, how we can measure it through the perspective of leaders worldwide. That's one thing, and then um, perhaps before that, very briefly tell, tell you what we actually mean by transition. Three fundamental drivers, and so, and then measure that, and lastly, how, how we deal with innovation, those three points. What do we mean by transition? It's not only decarbonization. Obviously, it is decarbonization, and that's the most important one, but it, there is other things too. But one comment on decarbonization. We often say it's about democratization of energy, and let's be cautious with that one. If we are saying that we have today in known resources, coal, oil, gas, a factor 2.8 more than what we can burn and emit in terms of CO2, then that points to no less politics, but more geopolitics, regional politics. So we have in known resources, coal, oil, gas, 2,800 gigatons of, um, of uh, embedded CO2, and we are allowed to burn 1,000. And I think the first point I'm making, the first driver is decarbonization, and let's not think as, uh, uh, of this as something that decreases regional politics. We have to prepare for that. My second point, the second driver, it's about the whole innovation space. And it's not only driven by decarbonization, the whole innovation space, and I'll give you three keywords. It's about electrification supported by decentralization and digitalization. Those, this is the kind of innovation uh, focus area, and I think it's an amazing, uh, the steel example you're giving, if you think of the electricity, when we are saying on the transport side, electrification adds is somewhere between the 15 and 25%, perhaps a footprint of electricity. Steel is a totally different ballgame. We add a whole entire system next to it. So we need to keep those points in mind, and that's, that makes the point that you're making, Minister, even more exciting, actually. Now, um, the third uh, driver is the resilience driver. Resilience, three risks, cyber, extreme weather, energy, water nexus, are three risks to which the energy system is hugely exposed. And the risk in those areas is increasing. Just one, uh, we collect case studies, how we have to better deal with those risks. And the shortest story is, let's learn from uh, La Fontaine um, in, in his story about the oak and the reed. We come from a world where we have built oaks in the energy system. The thunder or the storm comes, the oak goes down, it's very difficult to bring it back up. On the reed side, the, uh, the storm comes, reed is going down, but reed is locally empowered, has black starting capability, lots of local talent at the roots, and therefore stands up by itself. And I think, so as the three drivers, decarbonization, innovation, and uh, resilience, those are the three that I'd like to invite us to consider when we think about transition. Now let's measure that. We are today actually launching our latest issues monitor. With that, we are surveying 1,300 decision makers in over 90 countries every year. And by the way, you have access to it. The tool, uh, don't try it, it's a, a beta version. The tool is available for everybody to use and play with them on, on this website. Uh, use your computer to do it. But here, I'm going to give you a few of the high um, uh, level insights. First, how to read this uncertainty impact 1,300 people tell us for 42 issues that define energy. Think of these 42 issues that define the energy space. What keeps them mo most awake at night up here, so high uncertainty, high impact? What keeps them most busy at work and kind of the weak signals? I'm showing you first world top awake at night blockchain and internet of things. It's the one, number one, how amazing is that? Huh? Globally, the number one um, uh, considered uh, key uncertainty is blockchain. The top action item is renewable energies. But even more important than just look at those two digits is the trend over the past five years. Look where some of the issues have come from, the weak signal space and our core front center stage. Those are digitalization, storage, the decentralized system, renewable energy, market design. Those are the types of issues that five years ago in over 90 countries, energy leaders were not bothered with and today see as core, front and center issues. And I think that's my key point here. The transition measured through the innovation lens, that's the story behind it. There is massive change of consciousness around those issues. 
On the other hand, things have gone down. And while there is a lot of, and I've just come from a breakfast on the ministerial side, where there's obviously a lot of discussion sti still around CCS, the reality is that we, yes, at micro scale, some of those projects are successful, but at macro scale, we are not seeing a difference at all. Not the progress that we need. We would want it, we would love it, but we don't see it. It's the reality how we have to say it. Unconventionals, I think, if you, if you look at the current oil price, um, well, unconventional would jump up again, so unconventionals. But the reality there is, it's happening in the US and outside the US. Many of the other examples were much harder to realize than what people thought in the first place. Nuclear, again, a very country sec uh, fragmented picture. Some countries love it, some others uh, have stopped it. And coal, I think there's a general trend um, that we cannot um, ignore, and that is simply the reality. Coal, in terms of its outlook, um, has peaked already. And um, whatever policy some people would like to be, uh, put in place to keep it alive, it's prolonging agony at best. That's the shortest on the issues monitor. Let me, if you're saying that innovation is so critical, what are we doing about it? And uh, it's an invitation to you as well. We are saying, Innovation, actually, there is so many things happening. We have a process that takes the best innovators. We are partnering with the German government. We have the UA government, uh, Canadian government, Asian Development Bank, other partners joining, and obviously with our own network. Every year, we are looking for the 100 best innovators um, in the energy space, in that space that I've defined through the three drivers up front. Now, not just to find the best stories, but also to support those innovators in defining their ecosystem. Let me give you two examples what we mean by that. Rural entrepreneurs on the one hand, blockchainers on the other. Rural entrepreneurs, digital blockchainers on, on, on the other. Rural entrepreneurs, they live from extremely thin margins. They make a massive difference. For the, This is the first year. This has been the first year where rural electrification rates have been faster than rural growth rates. So we have an absolute decrease in rural uh, uh, energy poverty. And 86% of the 1.1 billion are rural uh, in terms of energy poverty. Now, those rural entrepreneurs, when we talk to them, and there's dozens of great stories, we could go into many of those. They tell us they live from 0.01% type of order of magnitude, um, uh, internal, internal, rate of growth, um, uh, internal rate of return. Now, anything that looks like an import duty, administrative hurdles, local content requirements, and the like, will kill them. It means there is no business in those countries who forget that. And we, we help, we help uh, regulators to understand, to see that picture, meanwhile obviously opening the pathways for some of those rural entrepreneurs. That's one example. Blockchain digital, very briefly, last example, we try to work with the, the blockchainers, and you know, uh, I'm going to give simply one example. That I'm on the Energy Web Foundation. We have, um, we, we are developing Cortec and, and appli application with 30 utilities, etc. But one of the observations, also that needs support. It was hard for us to find a bank account because of the confusion the how, uh, around the whole crypto space. It took us in a country, my own country, and um, ministry have great hospitality. But next time, please let the Swiss win in the um, in the hockey finals. Um, that, um, that would um, make me love even more coming here. But um, in my own country that wants to be a crypto valley, it, it, was, it took us seven months to open a bank account because of the crypto confusion. And I think we forget sometimes how difficult it is for new business to actually become part of the ecosystem. It may not be energy stuff itself. It may be things surrounding, and we need to understand those, help them. So my invitation... Join our Sustainable Energy Transition Award efforts. Help us identify the best innovators. Become a partner in helping understand what it takes to their ecosystem efforts. And um, I look forward to seeing more of that working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christoph.